G'day, it's Justin from Australia, and you're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs on TJV with Josh, Diesel, Chevy, the two Frankies, and Britt. Enjoy! <laughs> Good evening, everybody. It's evening already. I haven't filmed anything today. You want to see the load I'm working with? We're in Fargo, North Dakota at the Flying J. I just had a shower. There's a little bit of work tying this all down. So, worked a bit of a sweat, but now I'm all clean. It's a bit windy. Don't mind the wind noise. I'm trying to block the wind for you. This is uh, the load I have. Very light steel, very light. It looks like that heavy steel. It's uh, it's actually pretty light. I think it might be aluminum. Let's check the paperwork, but uh, I don't think it's aluminum. I don't know. All I know is it's going to Latalie, Manitoba. I'm in Fargo, North Dakota. And we need to get going. I've been in a rush all day, even though I don't need to be in a rush. Time is already 6.30. What are you guys looking over there for? Hey. Just talking to you. What are you looking at? <laughs> I thought I pointed you at me. I look back and you're pointing over there. Diesel. Maybe you were trying to look at Diesel, but he wasn't there. Diesel, they wanted to look at you. Look at your gorgeous, majestic face. Can you sit? Well, that sort of sitting his favorite way to sit <laughs> i gotta build him something so he has a bed there but i need this space open as well because i need to be able to see that window down there when i'm in like big cities like chicago special thanks to bruce kimmel who sent me these hats and shirts i have forgotten to give you uh, a proper thank you on uh, video i really do appreciate it these hats are amazing i could wear these all day i'm gonna try to keep this for like when I'm not working, but I accidentally wore it while I was loading the other day and it got a little dirty. I have one extra, but so comfortable. It's a Lamborghini hat, of course. Lamborghini is my favorite exotic sports car. If you're talking normal cars, I like the Chevy. I actually like the Chevrolet Corvette before they put it, put the engine behind the seats, before they made it a mid-engine. Now it looks like a wannabe Ferrari or a wannabe Lamborghini and you can't you can't ever imitate Lamborghini, okay? Ferrari's okay, I like Ferrari. We let them be there. There's, you need good competition, but Lamborghini is where it's at. And I feel like Corvette tried too much to be Lamborghini or Ferrari. I liked it better. It's an American muscle car, it's an American sports car. To me, in my opinion, if it's gonna be American and have a Chevy emblem on the front, the motor should be in front of the cab. That's just as American as it gets, right? It's just like the Dodge Viper. It's got a V10 under there, or is it a V12, V10? Yeah, it's got the SRT10. And it's all in front of the, it's got this big long hood, right? This like Cruella DeVille hood. It's awesome, it's American. You put the engine in the back, now you look like you're trying to be Italian. And I can't even do an accent, so that was my failed attempt. But, uh, Lamborghini, tell you what, if I ever if I ever hit it rich, if I ever win the lottery, you'll know. I'll have a Lamborghini. And the rest of it I'll put into investments that'll actually make me money. Because the Lamborghini is expensive, it's expensive to maintain, it's expensive to service, and it depreciates. <laughs> but if you can, why not? Let's get out of here. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Trailer is still attached, just just like I thought it was. Very nice. We're gonna turn around to our right here. And make our way out the 
exit. Oh, my poor alignment. Oh, I gotta watch it on those potholes. You wanna hear the shlibibs? You wanna hear them? <laughs> okay, we'll turn them off now. We're in town. Shh. Right, Diesel? Yeah, it was awesome, man. You yeah, got me all excited. I know, right? Jake brakes always get me excited, too. Okay, today, Junior, come on. Put that Mercedes in gear. Wow. Better safe than sorry, I guess. Sunday driving on a Wednesday. Or is it Thursday? It's Thursday, isn't it? Sunday driving on a Thursday. this stuff off tomorrow morning in Latalie, Manitoba. I'm heading to Kenora for a load of, uh, I don't know if it's culverts or pipes. One of the two. Something round and hollow. I'm gonna pick it up and bring it back to our yard Friday evening and then go home for the weekend. We have another uh, appointment with the doctors uh, on Monday. Saturday we have a wedding of one of our friends and Sunday I'll probably uh, I don't know work on the truck so Sundays are for right this is turning out to be a long clip but I'm gonna take us all the way out, on, out onto the freeway if you guys don't mind hanging out for a bit we got the green light I'm pretty sure they got the green turning light too Maybe not. I fueled up here at the Flying J. Fuel price for me was $4.80. 5.9 or in all reality for normal people four dollars and 86 cents per gallon us which uh translates to six dollars and 36 cents canadian per us gallon or a dollar 68 per liter canadian so as soon as i cross the border into canada the fuel price is about two dollars a liter it's about 40 cents cheaper just on this side of the border, after all conversions are done. Per liter, I mean that's 40 cents per liter and I filled up for 432 liters. So that's quite a savings. If you think about it, you take 50 cents times 432. What was it, 216? No, yeah, 216, right? $216 that I saved by fueling here. Did I do that math right? Come on, Josh. Break out the high school consumer math. I think I was estimating 50 cents per liter. 40 cents cheaper per liter. Whatever, I saved like 150 to 200 bucks, somewhere in there. It's incredible how cheap the fuel is in the US, comparatively. Like if you compare it to Canada. But I am by no means saying that that is cheap. 486 a gallon is still expensive. They're not tricking me. That should be closer to $2 a gallon. Man, it should be like $1.50 a gallon. I can still remember when gas in Canada was 32 cents a liter. Now 
now it's two dollars. I can remember that, I'm not that old. Whatever, you guys know the same old spiel. Oh, he's talking about the fuel prices again. <laughs> he's always talking about those things. I'm a truck driver, sort of one, sort of like on the forefront of my mind. It doesn't bother me as much, but it does bother me when I go to buy my groceries, when I go to buy things for my house, when we're trying to build our house right now. Man, it's expensive. Like we're looking at these numbers because we have everything priced out for our build, right? We got a quote. And ho! <laughs> Woo! It's not cheap to build a house. But the thing is, we can still build our house, our shop, our garage, and a four season sunroom for Brett for half the price of a house going, going at normal price in Winnipeg. And we have a big acreage and a big wooded area. And property taxes are less than half of what they are in the city. So it's still a lot cheaper building out in the bush. I'm gonna be building our garage, or at least I want to. I shouldn't say I'm going to be. I wanna build our garage uh, so that all the wiring for charging an electric vehicle is built in. And I'd love to have the wiring set up so that I could put solar panels on the roof one day. So that at least in the summertime when the sun doesn't go away, we can pretty much have free energy for our vehicle. We'll have one like one electric and one gas powered. I'm not saying if this actually this will actually happen because I'm not a big fan of electric vehicles at all. But I'm also not a fan of these high gas prices. But you know what I've heard is with the gas prices, I mean, pardon me, with the energy prices going through the roof, I've heard the energy energy prices in Europe. That's insane. Fueling up your gas powered vehicle will be cheaper than charging your electric car at those rates. I've never lived through the death 
of a monarch, of a king or queen. I know the official protocol. There's 10 days of official mourning now, and there's a whole bunch of uh, government protocol and stuff that's happening for the funeral, the procession. It's a, it's a big thing. But you know, she's not just queen of the UK. She's queen of Canada, queen of Australia, queen of New Zealand, and many other countries, actually. <laughs> But uh, my whole life, we just had one queen. And my parents' whole lives, get this. When my parents were born, Queen Elizabeth II was already on the throne. She was already the queen. My, my parents' entire lives, there's just been one queen. Now we got a king. Sounds weird, right? King Charles III, king of Canada. Canada has a king. King of the United Kingdom. King of Australia, King of the Commonwealth, King of New Zealand, King. Feels weird still, right? I don't know what changes are going to happen. I, I don't know. I don't, like, the Queen never played that big of a role in Canada. Yes, she's our head of state. She has a Governor General that's here in Canada who represents her. She still has authority, and the Crown still rules over everything. We, we elect our prime ministers and we elect our governments, but they govern our country and make our laws and legislation under the authority of the crown, which has been represented by Queen Elizabeth II for 70 years, seven decades. And now that crown is represented by King Charles III. I wonder if he's going to do things differently or follow in her footsteps exactly. He's a different person, right? So of course it's going to be different. Queen Elizabeth and the monarchy has been a stable factor in Canada and the world. In a crazy world where everything changes, that's our system. And the reason why I like it is that it's our head of state is stable. And our head of state now has been groomed his entire life. He spent 75 years preparing to be the head of state. He knows what he's getting into. He knows what he's doing. The next king, King William, or Prince William now, when he is king, he will have spent his entire life preparing and getting ready to be head of state. And you, over a long term, you can get a lot more done and you can keep the Commonwealth and the nation running steady in the same direction, for the most part, if you have a stable crown guiding you or keeping you within the lines. The crown doesn't really guide us, we guide ourselves. But, uh, you know, if worse comes to worse, we always have the crown to fall back on. That's sort of how I've always seen it. I've always seen uh, Queen Elizabeth as a uh, stable, uh, as a symbol of stability. You know, at least some things don't change, right? It's kind of nice. But now, we'll see what happens. I don't, I don't know what to expect. Am I even gonna notice anything different? I'm, I'm guessing our currency is gonna have to change because uh, like the faces on it, because our $20 bills and all of our coins have Queen Elizabeth II on it. So I'm guessing they're gonna have to change that to have King Charles on there now. So our currency is gonna have to be reprinted and slowly like take, I don't know if they're gonna take the old ones out of circulation or if it's just gonna slowly work itself out or if they're just gonna leave it for a while, but I mean, King Charles is going to want his face on there. I mean, it's a king. He makes sense. To tell you the truth, though, I have no idea what's going to change. Maybe nothing will change. In my daily life, I bet you nothing's going to change. <clears throat> when I go into government federal buildings, instead of having a picture of the queen on the wall, there will now be a picture of the king. That's probably the only difference I'm gonna notice. But you never know. The era of Queen Elizabeth II is over and each monarch has their own personality that they bring. So we're in a new era now in the Commonwealth. I know we didn't do much filming today. It's the morning time, and uh, I'm just gonna wrap this up and say thanks for watching. 
We're here to unload. I'm second in line, as long as they follow the order we arrived in. <laughs> if they don't, that's okay. Two of my buddies are here from Keystone right now. They got uh, Pedro being unloaded there right now, and then we got Brian over there in my old KW. If you guys remember that from the very beginning when I started making vlogs, that was the first KW uh, W9 I ever drove. I made me fall in love with W9s, and it led to this. We're gonna get this unloaded. Tomorrow's vlog will start after this, so we'll have an empty trailer. I have to run to Kenora and back, and then I'm done for the weekend. So it's gonna be fun. I hope you join me. It's gonna be a whole bunch more fun if you're there. It's pretty boring if I'm just by myself, so I appreciate you guys hanging out. Old Blue appreciates it too, and Diesel. Where is he? Diesel? 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 Diesel appreciates it too. Morning, guys. I, I, I had a good night. It was very nice. It gave me a good day. Dad said so. Very tired. It was a long day yesterday. Lots of work. I'm tired with you. Have a good one, everyone. I'm going to go have a nap. Old man weasel. Tell you what, first thing in the morning he's already talking about how tired he is. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Appreciate all you guys do to help me out with the channel. All uh, hitting the thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. I know you guys have been doing that because we've been growing. So thank you very much. And I'll talk to you in my next video tomorrow. Kenora and back.